I'm Pastor Salem, and I want to welcome you to the Christian Worship Hour. And uh, another week has gone by. The Lord has tarried another week. And uh, so here we are to worship the Lord. And isn't it wonderful that we're worshiping with people all over the world, and we're at one focal point, one place, and that is the feet of Jesus. And we're coming to worship Him and to worship God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and worship Him and draw strength and encouragement from Him and bring praise and honor to His name. So we're just so glad that uh, you're all with us and all together worshiping the dear Lord Jesus. Well, we're reading from Philippians chapter 1. And uh, so you can get your Bibles. I know that some of you get all dressed up for church and you have your Bibles and you're all set. One lady said she has a cup of coffee alongside of it. And if that isn't something... But that's all right. Just uh, just join us, and uh, but um, don't get into that easy chair, that lazy boy chair, because you won't be with us all the way. You'll be in la la land before you even get to the good part of the sermon. So just stay awake with us, but uh, get your Bible, and we got Philippians chapter one, starting with the twenty-first verse. Paul writes, "For me, for to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain." But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I, shall, what I shall choose, I know not. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for your furtherance and the joy of faith, that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ. For me, by my coming to you again, only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel, and in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but of, to you of salvation and that of God. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict which he saw in me, and now here to be in me. And so we're going to pray, and in our prayer today, we're going to pray for our, the persecuted church in Kuwait. Every week, without fail, we pray for the Christian church, the persecuted church in some part of the world. And there are multitudes giving their life for Christ and, being, and are being persecuted in so many ways. And we took, it's a great joy and a great privilege to uphold them in prayer. And their steadfastness encourages us to also be steadfast and remain true even unto death. So let's look to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this passage in Philippians chapter 1 who gives us instructions on how to live the Christian life, how to be a better Christian, how to grow in our faith. And you give us so much guidance and direction. Help us to be willing students. Help us to have our hearts wide open to the preaching of the word and that we may follow you and serve you. And Lord, to those who do not know you, those who do have never accepted you as their Savior, we just pray today, this in this very hour, this very service, that they will see that they need Jesus and they want Jesus and help them to pray and to ask him into their heart and life. And you will always come in because you want, you're not willing that any should perish, but it all should come to repentance. And so may many, many turn to you during this very service. Dear Lord, we want to pray today for those who are shut in. We want to pray for those who are having troubles and trials. And we pray for the, those in Kuwait, Lord, that you'll bless them and help them and encourage them. We pray that in all that we do and say will honor you and be pleasing in your sight and will be beneficial for the Christians and the non-Christians alike, that the Christians will be strengthened and non-Christians will join their ranks to the glory of God. That's our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.